Hey guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be covering complex orders using R for the Trader API. And specifically, I'm gonna be covering five different types of orders. But before we get started, we need to assign a couple of things. I have commented out lines 12 through 14, but you would need to assign your app key and your secret along with your access token. If you haven't watched my other videos for the Trader API, please see part two on authentication, where you will be able to generate this RDS file with your tokens. Now, also in part Part two, you will be able to get this function called check access token, which will auto update our access token so that we can make valid requests through the API. Now you're also gonna need these three functions, which are available in my previous video. The first gets your account numbers so that we can route our orders appropriately. So I use that function to retrieve my account numbers and they also returned a hash value or the encrypted account number, which is the one that we need to pass in when submitting orders. You can also find this next function called build option symbols where we just pass in the underlying symbol, the expiration, the type and the strike. And it will build the appropriate option symbol the way that Schwab wants them in. So this just returns a string for the option symbol that you pass in given these parameters. And our last function is just to cancel orders where we pass in our encrypted account number and the order ID. Now for our very first example, we're gonna build a wrapper to submit a two-legged option spread. Now ideally, this will be a vertical spread, whether it be a credit or debit spread. And make sure you pay attention to this table where there are special instructions on which field to choose when placing option orders. For our first parameter, we need to pass in our encrypted account number, our two option symbols, the side whether we're buying to open or selling to open, again referencing this table for both of the options, the duration for the order, the order type, the number of contracts for both of these options, along with the limit price. And if you're submitting a market order, which I do not recommend, we don't have to insert a limit price. So that's why this parameter is null. And if we open up this function, we're gonna start off with building our URL, which incorporates our encrypted account number. As you will see from the other examples, the only thing that changes for the orders are the payload, which is this section here. Everything else stays the same, where we build our URL, create the payload, and then submit our order. So keep that in mind if you're building your own wrappers to submit orders. Now, depending on what the user inputs, we need to check if the order type is a net debit or a net credit, and also if the limit price was set. And if we did pass in a limit price and our order type is a net credit or debit, we're gonna round the limit price to two decimal places and return that as a character. Otherwise, it just assumes that you used a market order. So we're gonna return an empty string for the limit price. Now for the payload, some of these fields will be populated by the inputs we pass in. Now, one thing I wanted to point out was that we're using a custom order strategy type. Now I purposely set it up this way in case you wanted to use this template for other strategies, such as a calendar or a ratio spread. Now, once we build our payload, we need to check our access token to make sure that our token is still up to date. We're gonna pass in our URL, our payload, along with our current access token into this post request to submit our order. And if the page status code is 201, we're gonna retrieve the order number. Otherwise, it'll print out the error message we received. So again, the only thing that's really gonna change going forward is just the payload that we pass in. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this block so that we can test this function. Now in the next chunk, we're gonna send some debit spreads and credit spreads. And I'm gonna use my build option symbol to get the appropriate option symbols for Rivian. The expiration will be June 7th. I wanna trade the call side and the strikes that I'm gonna be using are the 11 and the 1150. So once we have assigned symbol one and symbol two, we can just place them into our order function where we also need to pass in our encrypted account number and make sure that you're referencing the correct option contract. So anything pertaining to this first symbol will end in one, such as the symbol, the side, and the quantity. Same thing goes for the symbol two. Anything pertaining to that option contract will end in a two. And so since this is a debit spread, we're gonna buy to open our first contract. We're gonna sell the second. The duration for the order will be day. The order type will be a net debit. My quantities will be one. No need to insert a negative one for the credit side. And the limit price will be 15 cents. So let's go ahead and run this block and we'll check on thinkorswim. And we now see our option order is placed. I'm running this after the market has closed. Please make sure you do the same when testing or else the order will go live if you're running this during the regular market session. Now let's try and place a credit spread. So again, we need to build our option symbols. This time I wanna to sell to open our first symbol and buy to open the second. Our order type will be a net credit. 
the quantity will be one for both contracts and I want to collect 75 cents for the spread. Now we're also going to try and submit a market order which gets placed but since I'm running this after hours it gets rejected. So whenever you're using market orders these will need to be placed during the regular market hours and as you see for this order I did not place a limit price. So let's go ahead and run this block and we'll check on thinkorswim. So as you see, the market order was rejected, but it did attempt to place it. The only one that went through was the one where we were using our limit price. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel these orders so that we can run our next example, which is the conditional order for the one triggers another. Now in this type of order, we submit our initial order to buy or sell. And if that order gets filled, it's going to immediately place a second order to close out our first one, whether it be to take profit or a stop loss. And I'll show you both examples using equities and options. So for this type of order, we're only going to have one symbol since we're opening and immediately trying to close it at a set profit or loss. We need to specify our sides. So please make sure that you see the table at the top of the script to make sure that you're setting your sides correctly, whether it be a buy for stocks or ETFs and buy to open for options. Our order types can be market or limit for the first order. And for the second, we can place limit, stop or stop limit. You can place market for the second order, but it doesn't make sense because if you think about it, when we place our initial order to buy or sell a stock or option, whenever that order gets filled, it's going to trigger the second. So as soon as that first order gets filled, your second order will also get filled. So it doesn't really make sense to use market orders for the second order type. We need to specify the quantity of shares or contracts for our symbol, the limit price on entry and exit, the session, whether it be normal, AM, PM, or seamless. For options, make sure that these are set to normal, the asset type, whether it be an equity or option, and our stop price for the stop limit or stop orders. So again, opening up this function, we're gonna create our URL, and in our next block, we're gonna build our payload, but it's gonna go through a series of checks as there is a difference between using a stop and stop limit. So it's going to run a series of checks to make sure that we build our payload correctly. And depending on the user input, we're going to create this payload. So our order strategy type will be a trigger order where this first part is for our initial order and our take profit or loss order will be the second block. Once we have constructed this payload, we need to check our access token and send a post request. And again, depending on the page status code, we either retrieve our order number or pass in the message we received from the API in case there were some sort of error. So we'll go ahead and run this block and go through some examples. All right, so for our first example, we want to send an order to buy Palantir. I'm only going to use one share at the limit price of $10. If that initial order gets filled, I want to immediately sell at the limit price of $50. The session will be normal and my asset type will be equity. So this will be a take profit order. The next two will be for stop loss, one for using a market stop and the second for a stop limit. So for our market stop, I want to buy one share of Siri at the limit price of a dollar. And if that order gets filled, I want to immediately place an order to sell having a stop loss of 50 cents and the session will be normal and the asset type will be equity. Now when using stop limit orders, apart from setting the stop price, we need to set the stop limit price. So that can be equal or of lesser value than the stop price. So in this example, I wanna buy one share of AMC stock at the limit price of $2. If that order gets filled, I wanna set my stop limit having a stop price of 155 with a stop limit at 150. The session will be normal and the asset type will be equity. Now finally, if you wanna use these for options, we first need to create our option symbol. So this will be for the queues, having an expiration of 614. On the call side, having a strike of 500. So I wanna buy one contract, I wanna buy to open for the that initial order at the limit price of one penny. And if that order gets filled, I want to send a second order where I sell to close at the limit price of 955. The session will be normal and the asset type will be option. So I'm going to run this block and we'll check on thinkorswim. All right, so we successfully set our four orders. And as you see, all of these have a wait trigger status for the second order where it's waiting for our first order to get filled. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel these orders. And for our next example, we're gonna do bracket orders. 
And in this type of order, we need to first place our initial order, whether we're buying or selling. And we're also going to send our take profit and stop loss orders. And if any of those two gets filled, it's going to cancel the pending order. Now, in this type of order, we only have one symbol, whether it be a stock ETF or option. We need to set our sides, whether we're buying to open for options or buying for stocks and ETFs. Our entry order type can be market or limit. Our stop loss order type can be stop or stop limit. The quantity of shares or contracts for our symbol. The entry price for the stock or option. The take profit price. The stop and stop limit prices along with the asset type which can be equity or option. So as always we need to start with creating our URL. It's going to run through the series of checks to make sure that our payload gets sent correctly. And the order strategy type here is a trigger. For the session I'm going to use normal and if you want to change that and make it a parameter you will need to change this in line 387 along with line 400 for the closing orders same thing with the duration so same as our previous function this first block contains the instructions for our initial order and the second will be for our closing orders which contains our one cancels other order and once we build our payload we need to check our access token we're going to create a post request extract our order number if the page status code was 201 otherwise just print out the error we received from the api so we're going to go ahead and run this block and run through some examples all right for this type of order we're going to send three different types the first two involve equities and this last one is for options so i'll show you how to use this wrapper if you just want to use a market stop or a stop limit order all right so for the first example i want to buy one share of rivian at the limit price of $5. My take profit price will be $10 and my stop price will be $4.75. If you wanna use a stop limit order, it'll essentially be the same thing, except now for the stop loss order type, we use stop limit and we also need to set our stop limit price. And again, this stop limit price can be the same or of lesser value than the stop price we pass in. So in this order, I wanna buy one share of FBTC at $58. My take profit price is $62.50 and I want to set my stop price and stop limit price at $57.50. And finally, for our options, I'm going to build my option symbol for Tesla having an expiration of June 28th. This is on the put side, having a strike of 100. So we pass that into symbol. Our initial order will be buy to open and our second orders will be sell to close. Our entry order type will be market, which will be this buy to open. Our stop loss order type will be stop limit. So again, we're buying one contract. I don't need to set an entry price since this is a market order, but I do need to set my take profit price, which will be 678. My stop price will be three cents and the stop limit price will be two pennies. And finally, Finally, for asset type, this needs to be set to option. So let's go ahead and send these orders and we'll take a look at Thinkorswim. All right, so we see two of the three orders and just as last time, we can't use market orders outside of regular market hours. So that's why this order got rejected, but we do see the other two and we do see the bracket orders here waiting to be triggered by our first order. So now let's go ahead and cancel these orders and go to our next example, which is setting a trailing stop. Now for these last two examples, we do need to have some sort of stock or ETF or option in our account because it assumes we're trying to close a position in our account. So for the trailing stop, we need to insert our hashed account number, the symbol we're trying to close out, the quantity or contracts for that symbol. Now for the link basis, we can use manual, base, trigger, last bid, ask, ask bid, mark, and average. And then based on whatever you input in here, we need to set our link type. So I think in the example that they had, they used bid for the link basis and value for the link type where the price offset was $10. So they were using a dollar basis for the trailing stop, where in my example, I'm gonna use a percent for the link type just to have some variation. And finally, we need to set the asset type, whether it's equity or option. So for this example, again, we need to build our URL. We need to construct our payload. After that gets created, we need to check our access token and we're gonna submit a post request, extracting our order number or the error message from the API. So let's go ahead and run this function. And I do have one share of FBTC in my account. So I'm gonna try and place a trailing stop using the mark for the link basis and a 7% trailing stop. So let's go ahead and send this order and we'll take a look at Thinkorswim. 
and we do see our order here and we see that it's using the appropriate 7% trailing stop linked off of the mark. So I'll go ahead and cancel this order and for our final function, we have an OCO order. Again, assuming that you have this position that you wanna close out in your account. So we need to pass in our encrypted account number, the symbol we're trying to close out, the quantity, whether it be the number of shares or contracts for the symbol we're trying to close out, our take profit price, our stop type, whether it be a stop or stop limit, the stop price, the stop limit price, if you're using a stop limit order, the duration and the asset type. So again, we need to build our URL, passing in our account number, we need to run the series of checks depending on what the user inputs. And we're gonna use the inputs to create the payload. Once the payload is assigned, we need to check our access token. We're gonna to send a post request. And if the page status code is 201, we need to extract the order number. Otherwise return the message from the API with the error. So let's go ahead and run this function. And I'm gonna use this order for FBTC. I wanna close out one share. My take profit price is 62.50. I'm gonna use a stop limit order with the stop price and stop limit price set to 59. The duration will be day and the asset type will be equity. So let's go ahead and send this order. And now we see that we have our OCO order having a working status with our take profit order and our stop limit order. So again, this assumes that you have a position in your account that you're trying to close out. But with that, guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.